वेलकम टू मेट लैक्टो टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस फोर मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट वायरस लाइक एजेंट सो डिफेक्टिव वायरस सूडो वायरस वायरॉइड एंड प्रियोन सो लेट्स स्टार्ट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी विल डिस्कस द डिफेक्टिव वायरस एज द नेम इंडिकेट देर इज ए डिफेक्ट इन दिस वायरस ओके Actually, you will see the defective virus contain two most important thing as usual virus contain. So basically, two important thing. If you see here, like this is the center at the core, you will see the genome, and that is actually the nucleic acid, DNA or RNA. Okay, and outside you will see the capsid that is actually made up of protein. so outside you will see the protein so what's actually the difference between the normal infectious virus with the defective virus in the defective virus you will see the deletion of genetic material or you can say mutation so most important thing if you see in the defective virus you will see the mutation in the genetic material this is the most important point if there is a mutation that it will face some difficulty in its replication so it actually required the helper virus for its replication because there is some part that is missing in its genome so that's why it requires helper virus for its replication that actually fulfill the uh, defective requirement of the defective virus so this is an important point okay defective virus actually form along with the replications of the infectious virus this point is very much important in the replication of the normal virus defective virus form along with that so if i say that this one defective virus defective virus ratio infectious virus infectious virus so that will be if you see here like this one 100 to 1 ratio it's mean if you see the one infectious virus then along with you will see the 100 defective viruses this point is very much important okay so that's it's mean actually defective virus interferes in the growth of the infectious or replications of the infectious virus that's why the quantity or the number of the defective viruses are larger than the infectious viruses so it's mean we can use defective viruses for the hindrance or the blockage of the growth of the infectious virus and if we block or to stop the replications of the infectious virus it's mean that we are treating the disease that is caused by the infectious viruses okay this is the most important thing defective if we use we can use defective viruses for the hindrance or the blockage of the replication of the infectious virus if there is no infectious virus and there will be the no disease that is caused by the infectious viruses so this is all about the defective viruses next is the pseudo virions pseudo means false it means they are not true viruses so how first of all if you see like this is the host cell okay this is the case in the host cell you will see this host cell is infected by viruses okay i am saying this host cell is actually infected okay after that you will see in the infection of this host cell the dna or the genetic material of this host cell will be fragmented and if you see like this genetic material now is in present in the fragmented form okay after that you will see in this cell host cell you will see the formations of the capsid around the genetic material okay and ultimately you will see the formations of the pseudovirions so you notice that 
the genetic material actually comes from the host cell. This genetic material is not the viral genetic material. This one. Actually, the, the genetic material in the pseudovirions actually comes from the host cell. Actually, uh, there is a research in which you will see the inf uh, mice is actually infected by the polyoma virus. Okay. After that, you will see that the, in the cells of the mice, you will see the virus, polyoma virus. But that polyoma virus contain the genetic material of the mice instead of the genetic material of the viruses. So that's actually... Uh, you will see the formations of the pseudovirions in this case. Okay. Next, if you see, like this is the viroids. In this case, you will see there is no protein, there is no envelope. Okay. You just see the single circular RNA. So here you see, here, this is actually the RNA, circular RNA. No doubt it can present in other form as well like roads and branch shape but the basic is the circular RNA. Okay. And that RNA is not able or form the protein. So this RNA cannot form the proteins because as we know that the RNA is involved in the formations of the protein. But this RNA is unable to form any protein. But there are some mechanisms through which this RNA viroids replicate. But the exact mechanism is, is still unclear. And they are actually involved in the diseases that are specific to the plants. So viroids is actually cause diseases in the plants. Okay. Next is the prions, as the name P, P for prions and P for protein. Actually, they only contain the protein. They are just made up of protein. As viroids contain only genetic material and the prions just contain the protein. Okay. Prions actually cause the transmissible spongiform encephalopathies. So, this point is very much important. They are involved in the Transmissible spongiform encephalopathies. Pathies. Okay. In this case, in this disease, it means they are something related to the brain because encephalopathies. Okay. In this case, you see the most important two diseases. So, first one, if you see like in this case, you will see the Crutes Felt Jacob disease. That is actually, you will see in case of humans. Another, you will see the Scrappy. That is actually, you will see in animal like the sheep. So, these are two most important diseases. That is actually transmissible spongiform in which you will see the brain is actually look like a sponge so this is the that's why it is actually called the is transmissible spongiform encephalopathy that prions that is actually protein in nature actually resistant to different things like if you see like it will be resistant to the ultraviolet light it will be resistant to the heat it will be resistant to the formaldehyde it will be resistance to the nucleases so actually you see Prions is actually resistant to the ultraviolet light, heat, and you see the formaldehyde, maldehyde, and nucleases. Okay. But we can inactivate the prions with the help of the autoclaving. Okay. This is the thing. Auto. Claiming. We can also inactivate with the help of the hypochloride, okay, of the sodium hydroxide, okay. So, these are basically the different things 
that are actually prions is resistant to these things and inactivated by the different things like the hypochlorite and the sodium hydroxide. Okay. They are actually, prions are actually in filamentous form. They are, are actually filaments in shape. Okay. How prions actually forms? Actually, if you see, like this is the normal cell. This is the normal cell. And this one is actually the infected cell. This is the infected cell. Okay. In the body. Okay. In this case, you will see actually this is a protein and protein actually the message comes actually from the DNA. Okay. So if you see like first thing if you see in that actually happens in both situation. It doesn't matter what type of cell. Cell can be normal or infected. Okay. In both the case you will see the first of all genes that is actually the genetic material through which you will see the formations of the RNA. Okay, now this actually happens with the help of the transcription. Okay, after that you will see the formations of the protein. But now you will see there are two different situation. First thing that is after the RNA you will see protein is formed through the translation. So this is actually the translation process. Okay. After the translation process, you will see the post-translational modification. Post-translational modification. Fication. That is very much important. After the formations of the protein, there are some changes that happens in the protein and that will distinguish normal protein with the prions okay this is the two important thing that actually happens after the translation process that will, that actually distinguish the normal with the prions protein okay like if you see first thing if you see prions are basically the normal protein and they are actually produced normally and they perform different function as well. They are actually non-pathogenic. So if you see normal prion protein is actually if you see like this is the alpha helix in form. This is the normal protein that actually form in the body and they perform different role like it is actually involved in the transduction in neurons and then also involved if you see like this is the neuron this is the uh, post synaptic membrane and this is the presynaptic membrane in the post synaptic membrane there is a receptor and that receptor is n methyl d aspartate receptor so n methyl d aspartate receptor is actually regulated by the prions protein and that is actually present in the alpha helix form they are actually involved in the activations or in the process of this a receptor with the help of the with the binding of the, of the copper ions so it's mean that the prion protein help in different functions and that is actually present in the alpha helix form there or you can say this you can say uh, prion protein cellular so this is actually the normal protein okay but now when you see the conformational chain in this alpha helix protein then it will convert into an other and that is the beta platelet so this is actually the beta platelet now you see this shape or this conformations of the protein is now pathogenic pathogenic this is actually non pathogenic but when it will become into the beta plated case, you will see it will become pathogenic. Okay. Now, when it will become beta plated, they further activate the normal alpha helix to become beta. So now they will continuously convert the alpha helix or start or induce the productions of the beta plated from the alpha helix. Now this process will continue. Okay. 
but there are some situation that the RNA can also induce the conversion of the normal prion protein that is actually present in alpha helix to convert into the beta platelet. Okay, that is actually the pathogenic case. Okay, now in this case you see that this protein that is alpha helix is can be destroyed by the proteases but the pathogenic form beta platelet is actually proteases resistance. Now protease enzyme cannot break down the beta platelet form of the prion protein but alpha helix form can be destroyed by the proteases in normal situation. Okay, when this protein beta platelet deposited in the light brain or in fact the brain then you will see the spongy form and you can, there is a lot of difficulty in the distinguish from the beta platelet forms of the prion protein with the amyloid because they amyloid also contain the beta platelet form so there are a lot of difficulty in distinguish from the beta platelet forms of the prion protein with the amyloid okay a beta platelet you can say also call the prion protein scrapy okay but the important thing last most important thing if you see like the, this is the normal form alpha helix this is normal form and that perform the normal function in the uh, signal transduction and the regulations of the receptor okay in the brain but this is actually normal our body will not activate or will not activate the immune system and the inflammatory system against this that is actually the normal so this is the case in which you will see there will be no immune system and the inflammatory system in case of prion proteins because they are normal so this is all about the prions in this lecture we will discuss basically the four atypical virus like agents if you have any question you may ask in the comment section thank you so much